All right, um, so I'm here at Jericho Beach at the foot of the hill going up to UBC, and I'm going to walk up in a couple hours. Um, the last video I did, I was reflecting on a little bit about the different types of people I've talked to about uh, the infiltration of woke ideology into our workplaces and our schools and how pervasive it is. Um, people everywhere are talking about this. Uh, uh, a stockbroker I talked to, the same industry as me, was talking about a number of high profile, um, uh, let's say, large money managers in Vancouver have just cashed out. Um, they've sold their practices. They decided they don't want to be uh, with changes in technology and, and the investment industry, but also with the wokeness and the, and the kind of things that are coming. Uh, they've decided that, that since they have the means, they're just going to leave. Uh, people are buying land in the interior of BC. Uh, one person I talked to uh, bought a 4,500 pound propane tank. That's a thousand gallon propane tank, had it uh, installed on their property. Um, and said, hey, I'm, I used to measure my retirement in RRSPs, but uh, I'm now measuring my retirement in BTUs. Uh, and I don't even know if I can safely call it a retirement anymore, that there's just too much going on. We have all this money, uh, but it might as well mean nothing if, uh, if uh, the direction that we're going in uh, continues to unfold the way that, uh, that some of us fear it might. So what are the common themes that people are... are um, about people who are awakening to this, who are, uh, yeah, yeah no, we're the new woke, right? Uh, who are becoming aware of this and, and recognizing the patterns that are playing out and how destructive and abusive they are. Well, one of the big numbers is uh, we saw uh, quite a few Eastern Europeans at the truckers rally. And I have a client who uh, escaped Bosnia, uh, um, the uh, former Czechoslovakia, uh, Sarajevo and he, he um, had two boys and he put uh, each boy on one side of the river in, uh, in Sarajevo and uh, he was the lead telecom uh, engineer in, who uh, brought Sarajevo onto the European connection grid uh, before the Sarajevo Olympics. Uh, he holds a number of patents and when, uh, when shit went down in the former Yugoslavia, he was conscripted into uh, one of the armies. And he had told his boys that if you have the opportunity, run. You know, drop everything and, and run if, if you have a chance to escape. And uh, they set a meeting point and, um, and he was conscripted to dig ditches, uh, trenches uh, for, for the war. Um, kind of pointless work, but he was, um, he was enslaved and he knows about what's going on. He's in his 80s now and he, he's looking at this and he's quite concerned. Um, I grew up, I'm an abuse survivor. Uh, my father was a narcissist. I mean, narcissists never get to, uh, uh, diagnosed, but he was a physical and psychological abuser. He played games. Um, Donald Trump triggered me an awful lot because uh, Trump is an overt narcissist. My father was a covert narcissist, but they played exactly the same uh, punishing games with people gaslighting, lies, calling people names, belittling them. Um, and, and along with the psychological, emotional abuse, there was physical abuse as well. And I grew up not really understanding how significant this was in relation to my peers. And I didn't realize it until I was dating a girl in university and went over to her family dinner one night and everyone was like smiling and laughing and they were genuinely enjoying each other's presence and there wasn't any minds buried at the dining room table and there was no walking on eggshells and things like that. So people who've been through this and, and, and quite a number of people are contacting me and, and this is one of the themes that's coming up. I'm an abuse survivor. I survived an abusive adult relationship with someone who I thought was, was, was wonderful. And, and over, over just a short period of time, it became really ugly and controlling and then physically or, and psychologically abusive and or. And I escaped. I figured out how to find myself again. And I figured out how to take back my soul. And I escaped. Um, I have someone who's contacted me and they, they came to Canada from uh, an authoritarian, uh, more than one person I'm talking to, from authoritarian countries, uh, religious authoritarianism or political authoritarianism. And they came here thinking that this would be a better place and they're shocked that it's not. They're, this, they're seeing this play out over again. Um, some of the people are, um, well, some of them are 
uh, explorers, artists, uh, people who are curious. Um, I think that in the modern psychedelic revival, there is some, um, the, the nature of, like Terence McKenna described uh, psilocybin magic mushrooms as, uh, as being a dissolver of boundaries. So when you take psilocybin, it breaks down kind of, or makes you question some of your beliefs and some of the things that you hold on to as, um, as, you know, just accepting on its face and you start to question those things. And psilocybin in my early 20s was actually, and, and LSD, actually, to be honest, uh, when I was tree planting, didn't do a lot of it, but uh, a couple of times uh, each of the of LSD and, uh, and a few times the magic mushrooms, which I preferred because they were, I felt they were more natural. But they broke me out of my trauma patterns uh, and helped me individuate as a human. So there are people who are in that artistic, sort of uh, psychedelic revival, open-minded. Um, people I know who come from, uh, yeah, that's, that's the core theme. Surviving abuse, uh, either at the family level, uh, surviving abuse at the relationship level, surviving abuse in, uh, in an institutional or, or even national level in, in another country and recognizing and seeing how destructive it is to people. Um, we're in a situation where the, the, the bonds of trust that have, that have kept our society coherent are being torn down and torn apart by redefinitions and by uh, slanderings and attacks and the fear that people carry about social pressure and now institutionalized um, in, uh, in the mechanisms of law and, and in the bureaucracies of, of, of institutions. Uh, yeah, that seems to be the pattern. Uh, it didn't take really many people talking to. I was starting to see this already and having had conversations with a bunch of people before I left Ottawa, that there's something there about, uh, about a, someone for some reason being forced to be a real individual and, and, uh, and come into their sovereign selves uh, as a survivor of, uh, or, or uh, having overcome major obstacles in one's life. And, and believing in and understanding in compassion and how that works and uh, how forgiveness works and forgiving oneself and being able to make peace with the relationships of the past is what I went through. Um, yeah, I'm sitting here at Jericho Beach. One of my favorite, we used to come here in high school. We would skip out of school and uh, we'd come down here and hang out on the beach and uh, smoke some weed and play frisbee and, and uh, you know, be kids and uh, always felt safe and always felt uh, confident in the country that we lived in and always felt secure never never questioned it and now people are starting to see it people are starting to question it it's starting to become apparent everywhere hey you can't say that um, and if you say that then there's a there's a mechanism an enforcement mechanism now built into your organizations and your institutions that are designed to fuck you up why are you in paperwork? It's a Kafka-esque uh, bureaucracy where, um, you know, accusations and, and then investigations and um, uh, I I all kinds of destructive processes that are forced in silence. Uh, silence any of the criticism. That's, uh, that's what I got here for this thought.